So as many of you know, there are two runoff races taking place in the state of Georgia that are ultimately going to determine which party controls the U.S. Senate, and both Republicans in these races have been busted doing insider trading. <laughs> Once they were briefed on the coronavirus pandemic and anticipated an economic collapse, they sold their stocks. Now, this was something that we already knew, and a Senate ethics investigation cleared them because there's not enough evidence to deduce that they actually sold stocks based on information that they received as United States senators. I mean, that isn't persuasive to me because... We can never really prove that a quid pro quo is taking place when politicians do the bidding of their corporate donors, but there's an implication that if you take money from a particular industry, they're going to expect you to not impose new regulations on them, or worse, deregulate them uh, furthermore. So, you know, this doesn't mean that she isn't involved in insider trading, but still, you know, um, this it's hard to prove these things. But what's funny is that we're getting more information about the extent to which David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler were involved in insider trading, and really this this isn't so open and shut. They were pretty bra brazen about their actions, and you know, it's not just them, to be fair. Inhofe, Feinstein, Burr, they also were involved in insider trading, and the investigation with regard to Richard Burr is still taking place. But we're learning more about David Perdue, Kelly Loeffler, and I honestly, I don't know how they expect to get away with this when they're so shameless. It's like they want to be caught. Because Kelly Loeffler's husband, he made decisions based on the information that only someone who's a United States senator, his wife, would know. And the revelations here from the story are jaw-dropping. So, as Molly Redden of HuffPost reports, in mid-March, with the American economy in freefall, Jeffrey Sprecher, husband to Senator Kelly Loeffler and chair of the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange, made an unusual change to his stock portfolio. He started buying. For weeks, the couple had done almost nothing but sell. Loeffler was one of several senators who faced public outrage for unloading millions of dollars in stock before most Americans understood the towering threat posed by the coronavirus pandemic. Then shortly before the CARES Act, a $2 trillion emergency stimulus package was introduced in the Senate. Her husband reversed course and purchased up to $1 million in new shares, a HuffPost investigation has found. The terms of the CARES Act were still mostly a secret, known primarily to Republican senators while members of their party crafted the legislation. But in the days before the bill's introduction, Sprecher managed to invest in several industries, insurance and energy, that were poised to take advantage of the bill's very specific provisions. Those purchases are just the latest to raise questions about whether Loeffler, the Senate's richest member, has ever used the insider knowledge she gleans on Capitol Hill to inform her own portfolio. After the Daily Beast revealed the extent of Loeffler's pre-pandemic sell-off, investigators for the FBI contacted her for evidence related to her trades. Soon after, Loeffler said she provided records to the Justice Department, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and the Senate Ethics Committee that showed her lack of day-to-day -day involvement in her and her husband's investment accounts. In May, Wall Street Journal reported that the Justice Department had closed investigations into Loeffler, Inhofe, and Feinstein, citing a lack of proof they had violated the law, but that the inquiry into Burr remained open open. So I think that it may be time to reopen these investigations as we learn more about the specifics here. This is shameless. I mean, are we really going to pretend like we don't have enough evidence to deduce that she was using her insider knowledge to personally enrich herself and her family? Are, are we really going to pretend that right now? I mean, <laughs> how shameless do you have to be? It's like, unless they say explicitly, I did insider trading, then we'll never have enough proof to arrest them and prosecute them. Like, what more do you want? I think that there's probably more to be said with regard to Feinstein and Inhofe. The way I see it is that all of them need to go to jail, and they could share a jail cell for all I care. But this behavior, if you don't rein it in, if there's no accountability, then how do you expect this behavior to stop? And the answer is that you shouldn't. And Kelly Loeffler is so corrupt. By the way, this is her with the QAnon conspiracy theorist, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, but she's so corrupt that on Fox News, she violated more ethics rules by soliciting donations for her campaign, to which uh, Representative Katie Porter responded by saying maybe the senator would be less worried about her election if she spent her time actually helping the American people instead of breaking ethics rules and campaigning using taxpayer resources. And I love that. <laughs>
<laughs> I love Katie Porter. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, the fact that the races in Georgia are even as close as they are, it really is an indictment on the media. And it's an indictment on the American people as well, let's be clear, because it shouldn't be this close. When you have people who are basically brazenly corrupt, they shouldn't be seeking re-election. They should be disqualified. There should be so much pressure for them to resign that this election isn't even close. But yet they may very well win after we have ample evidence that proves they were involved in insider trading schemes. And there's going to be no accountability.